Hey guys, Dan here and welcome again to that paintball channel. For this next installment in our series on barrels, we're going to be looking at one of the controversy undercards and that is the debate between traditional smoothbore barrels and spin inducing barrels, of which there are two. The first of these is rifled and the second is backspin inducing. So we'll look at some of the um, arguments for and against them, some of the pros and cons, as well as some of the science that goes into the barrels themselves, how they work and whether or not they do in fact work as advertised. Now, I recognize up front, and I should probably have noted this in the previous video, that as we examine these controversies, no doubt there's going to be some feathers ruffled because you're going to have people who are strong advocates for one side or the other, regardless of whether or not there's uh, good evidence to support it. You know, um, people like what they like, and because we're humans, we want what we want to be true to be true, which is to say that, you know, if I've come to like a thing or come to believe a thing, that I'm going to want to filter evidence and arguments in in favor of that and I will look closely at pieces of data that may support what I want to be true and ignore pieces of evidence or arguments that tend to push against what I want to be true. So I, I think it may be helpful to consider you know, something Tom K noted way back in the day and that is if there were a single barrel that were demonstrably and objectively better than anything else everybody would be using. And that is absolutely true. The fact that people across the board, from professionals down, are using different kinds of barrels, everyone is advocating for this or that, everyone is talking about getting good results from this or that, this tells us, I think, in, in the most concrete way, that barrels again, with respect to accuracy, don't actually matter that much. And again, I recognize that that is going to ruffle feathers, but we have to be willing to look the truth squarely in the eyes if we're going to make sense of the phenomena that we see on the paintball field. Again, not to say that there isn't good reason for going with different kinds of barrels for different reasons and under different circumstances. I use different barrels uh, for that very reason, but again, we're, we're talking about accuracy in this large series. So let's jump in and look at the first of these, uh, and that is the uh, rifled type barrel. Now back in the early 90s, Armson came out with a rifled barrel, made a huge stir, people were talking about it, picking them up, and the argument was that in the same way that you see with firearms, you have rifling, which imparts a, uh, a spin, that this will give gyroscopic stabilization to you know, the projectile. And so the thinking was, well, if it works with bullets and firearms, it should also work with paintballs. But quickly, it became very clear that arms and barrels did not perform any better than traditional barrels. Moreover, they had the additional advantage, uh, the threefold disadvantage, of being louder, less efficient, and also more difficult to clean if you had a barrel break. Now, the reason for this, it, they're all tied together. Of course, louder because, you know, you've got not traditional lands and grooves. They had sort of facets. I think it was an eight-sided uh, internal finish that had a, a spiral twist to it. But that means that you've, you, you allow a lot of air to go around that ball. So what you are effectively doing is creating a massive overbore. And this, of course, allows a lot of air to get past, and that creates noise as well as lack of efficiency. Moreover, you run into the issue of, you know, clean out if you should break uh, paint in there. You know, it's going to get in all the little nooks and crannies. So, you know, that in itself proved to not be very effective, though even today there are people who swear by these things. Now, more recently, about 10 years after that, I think, um, you know, early 2000s, maybe 2003 or something like that, Hammerhead came out with their, you know, 
updated version of the same concept. And they added to that, you know, little uh, sizer backs, you know, that supposedly did a variety of things. And it was the same basic argument. They'd had videos posted, you can find them and look at them, and they're very interesting, to say the least, uh, very entertaining. <laughs> Uh, especially when you look at the logic that's employed and you know actually study what's happening in the videos and look at the arrows and <clears throat> very entertaining uh, the science behind it is is dubious but entertaining and so it, it, it's it's the same kind of principle in both cases and of course you still have advocates for the hammerhead and as we'll see there is actually a place on the field for the hammerhead barrel specifically. Well, the reason that there is so much controversy about whether or not these work, you know, some people are saying, ooh, I can definitely tell a difference. Other people are saying, no, there's no difference. Uh, AGD, as they seem to have done with everything else, did some hard testing with, you know, uh, spinning paint balls. They actually designed a barrel that could be spun up to 30,000 RPM and it could be fired while it was spinning and they shot paint through it and they spun it and they found that you know below a certain threshold you know below 10,000 rpm or so paint shot through that barrel and it was you know so the paint is brought up to speed before it's shot made absolutely no improvement in terms of accuracy however once you got above 10,000 RPM, you had a profound degradation in accuracy because that imparted spin caused the balls to start kinking and hooking all over the place as they would if you get, say, wet paint or an extraordinarily underboard barrel situation. So what that tells us is rifle-type uh, barrels and indeed spinning a paintball in that way doesn't do anything beneficial and the reason of course is because uh, you don't have the ability to truly stabilize the ball the ball is too light it's still going to be susceptible to all those forces that we've talked about previously now there is one and only one circumstance in which using a rifled barrel would actually be beneficial and that is if you're using first strikes so first strikes are fin stabilized, basically a paintball with a fin stabilization uh, thing on the back. And it actually spins the ball. And if you're shooting it through a smooth bore, it takes some time to get up to full speed. So using something like a hammerhead or I believe Lapco makes a uh, first strike uh, capable barrel. And what that does is it gets the round up to speed in the barrel so that once it leaves it's already spinning at, at its uh, at its appropriate uh, rate and that is actually beneficial and of course first strikes are demonstrably more accurate than traditional paintballs but when we're talking about paintball accuracy we're talking about you know the the round traditional paintballs and so it's it's demonstrably the case that using a rifled barrel does not in any way shape or form help accuracy and if anything it it hurts it because if you have any kind of issues you know it's much more likely to induce the wrong kind of spin and you actually you don't want spin on a paintball at least gyroscopically um, it, it just tends to have too many disadvantages now uh, you know as I said there's gonna be people who will continue to advocate for that and and feel free you know use whatever barrel makes you happy but if we're talking about actual accuracy and we're talking about raw data um, you know rifled style barrels do absolutely nothing beneficial they are louder always more inefficient and much more likely to cause a actual accuracy degradation as well as have uh, clean out issues well let's now turn toward backspin barrels and this is a very different kind of principle so Tipman came out with their um, flatline barrel, and then of course you, later you've got the Apex, and the Apex uh, is very, very popular. So <clears throat> the original purpose behind this was simply to give 
additional range, you know, so you're using the Magnus effect. Um, in, in the case of the flatline barrel, you, you've got a curved configuration so that the ball basically rolls along the top part of the barrel and induces a backspin. In the apex, you've got a kind of rubber ramp that you can adjust to increase or decrease the amount of spin that's imparted to the ball. And this is very, very effective in terms of gaining range. Well, when it comes to accuracy, there's been some consideration. I've thought about it, other people have thought about it and done some testing on it with respect to whether or not inducing backspin could help to kind of alleviate the randomness factor that we've already talked about uh, with respect to paintball flight. So that random vortex shedding causes you know the paintball to wobble all over the air. Well, if you could just induce backspin, you could kind of get all those forces stacking up in one way. In this case, you know, you're creating lift, but you are really minimizing the ability of those otherwise random forces to have their effect. And so the thinking is, well, we, we're kind of getting all this all the spin, all the vortex shedding to work in one kind of predictable way, could this possibly help? Well, there's been some testing on this, and in fact, I'll, I'll link you to uh, some of the testing footage that's been done. Punkworks actually did some testing on this, I think back in early 2010, but unfortunately, the data seems largely, at least in the public sphere, to have been lost. Uh, some of the, the information where it was posted, um, you know, the site is no longer in, in existence. And I think the other one was uh, posting to, you know, Google Docs or something, and that link seems to be broken. So by all means, if anyone has access to their hard data results so that you could just sort of look through it, definitely, you know, post it in a comment. But the long and the short of it is, when they did testing, it was largely inconclusive and there, there, sh there seemed to be some indication that when you had a, an extreme amount of spin, you know, maybe there's something going on there. And there's some videos that, that show, you know, you, you, you're vicing a marker and you're using a backspin barrel versus a traditional barrel. And there are some videos that seem to show an increase in accuracy with a backspin barrel. There are also some videos that seem to show that there is a marked decrease in accuracy. So what this means is that it's not really clear either way. And I would submit because, you know, I, I've owned an Apex barrel, um, you know, did some fiddling around with it and ultimately rejected it. I wasn't impressed by it. But in theory, it, there is something maybe in there that using that backspin effect could help. But the problem is when that theory meets the real world, you have several factors that go into why I will maintain that a backspin barrel under no circumstances would be beneficial to accuracy if you're if you're talking about actual playable accuracy part of this is because given the extreme variations in the size shape etc paint what that means is your initial velocity is never going to be the same from ball to ball and if your initial velocity is never going to be the same from ball to ball it means the the rate of spin that you achieve is not going to be the same from ball to ball. So, you know, a ball coming out just slightly faster than another ball, the ball maybe is slightly heavy, it's slightly differently shaped, so even the speed at which it spins, and so you're, you're, you're adding up all these different variations. So the velocity is different, the rate of spin therefore will be different, and given the mass of the ball, the effects of that spin are also going to be different given you know all the other uh, the conditions that are at, at play here which means that even if you're inducing backspin you're still going to see a lot of randomness just because of the way that paintballs are 
So that's that's a significant problem. And then, of course, you also have the other factors, the fact that the ball is still very, very light. So it's still susceptible, you know, if a wind comes, okay, it's still susceptible to that. It doesn't matter that it's, you know, got lift, it's going gonna, it's gonna to move with the wind. So, you know, weather conditions and things like that, which are very important and very much underrated and underdiscussed, are still going to be at work. So that would be a strong reason to suggest, even on paper, why a backspin barrel is not going to be beneficial. Well then, let's pretend that, that we could do some, some hard testing and it could show that maybe if we had really, really, really good paint and we could be very, very consistent with the regulator and marker and all that stuff and we get good consistency, so we're getting good consistent backspin at velocity and we have good downrange accuracy in terms of ball, you know, ball, near ball consistency. The problem is when you take that marker out of the vise and you actually start playing with it because you are never going to be holding it perfectly up and down like this. You are always moving. You're always, you know, moving the marker this way, this way, depending on where you're at. You're changing hands. Sometimes you're really uh, laying that marker over to conform to a bunker or something like that. Well, now that Magnus effect, is it's not always, you know, working perfectly, you know, straight up and down. It's now going to cause your balls to turn and kink and hook. And for that reason alone, backspin barrels are, are arguably, I will at least argue, that they are the worst possible option if you are looking at actual playable accuracy. You know, there's a reason that, um, you know, professional players at the very least don't use backspin barrels. I mean, it's not because of the ranges. They're at much, of course, closer playing ranges and they don't technically need them. But adding the fact that you're you're creating a you're putting a curve on the ball, and if it's not perfectly up and down, that ball is now you know hooking to the right or to the left. And yeah, you can have fun with them, and yeah, you can reach out great distances, and you know you you can use them effectively in, in certain circumstances. But if accuracy is the objective, I would submit they're the worst possible choice. Um, so. That hopefully puts some of this in in perspective. And again, I know there are going to be you know people who will still continue to advocate. And again, that's fine if you want to use one. By all means, use one. But you know, if if it comes to real world accuracy and particularly data, hard data that's going to support it, it's it's just not there. So. Hopefully that's been uh, helpful, and again, I'll be posting some links to some of this material in the description, and we'll be looking forward to the next installment. Hope this has been useful. Come on back. Bring a friend.